Nga tātou mai koe ki a mātou i tēnei rā. Mana ki te a mātou mahi katoa i rungi tingoa. Amen. Thank you, Councillor Trennan, and uh, welcome back to the Council. Also, um, we have apologies this afternoon. Um, apologies from Councillor Williamson, who's on international duty. Moved by Councillor Chris Susky and seconded by uh, Councillor Harvey. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. It's against. Carried. Thank you. Uh, item number one. <coughs> Confirmation of the minutes of the ordinary council meeting on the 27th of October. Just before you do, Mr Chairman, could I just thank staff yeah. for including our uh, agendas that we do meet on the fourth Tuesday of the month. It's now been corrected from the last right. Tuesday. Thank you, Councillor Body. Any uh, matters arising or corrections of those minutes, please? Yeah, Councillor Cousins? I just wanted to ask, uh, the Tulangi Community Board meetings aren't here. The minutes, sorry, aren't here. Does anybody know? They'll be on the December meeting. We just didn't have enough time uh, for the turnaround for this meeting. Okay. All right. Uh, that being said, uh, can I have a move? Thank you, Councillor Jollins. Seconded by Councillor Hickling. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. It's against. Mm -hmm. Carried. Item number two, receipt of the minutes of the Audit and Risk Committee, uh, the Fred Committee and the Topol Airport uh, Committee. Any um, <coughs> points of clarification or typos or matters arising from those minutes? <coughs> so pretty straightforward to me. Okay. Any questions or queries? I'll move. I'll move Councillor Hickling, seconded by Councillor Cousins. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those against? Carried. Item number three, summer recreational licences. Ella. Good afternoon, Ella. Um, so obviously this would normally go to our food committee, but due to the timing of um, applications and the meetings, it needs to come to council today. Um, so we've had two applications, one um, which council have granted in the past two previous summers, um, the Hive Jet Skis at Two Mile Bay Reserve, and a new application for walk and water balls. Um, we, did, we were going to have Daniel Sutherland from the Jet Ski Hire to talk to council today, but he's unable to attend. Um, but there is a letter received from him at attachment six, I think it is, to your agenda. Um, and we do have a debt handle from the Walk on Water Ball um, application here today, so she can answer any questions um, you may have for her application. Okay. Thanks, Ella. Then afternoon, no debt. How are you? Good, Good. Nice to see you. Okay. Um, any other? Um, so I've just got a couple of things to highlight. Um, I won't go through the report in too much detail. Um, just firstly, on the jet ski hire. Um, application, as you will have seen not in the report, we've had signage compliance issues the past previous two summers, um, and so the recommendation there is to decline the application this summer. Um, I've also had a discussion with Maritime New Zealand to issue the amusement device certification for um, the Hive jet skis, and the um, operator, Daniel Sutherland, hasn't complied with the condition of getting a remote radio device um, and their advice has been that when his next amusement device certificate comes up for renewal um, at the end of next year um, they won't reissue it unless if they see evidence of him purchasing that device. Um. So that, just a clarification, so the current operator they don't have that device? It's a condition of their c certificate. Right. Certificate of compliance. They've been lenient with him so far, I guess they're going to take a harsh approach um, when his licence comes up for renewal next time. Okay. Um, 2016, October, I believe. Um, and that's all I probably wish to highlight. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Anna. Perhaps we, should we deal with the walk on water pools first? Mr Jim, just before you do, I, yeah. I have a couple of issues with what we're dealing with. Um, Riley's been said that it's a Fred decision, and the subject has been brought up to the degree that um, we're not having another meeting or we can't have it. If you look at the agenda items, 
that starts off a Fred meeting and actually says uh, when required, there are no set dates. And I'm a little bit concerned that the one to do with the, um, the jet ski, if I look at the gentleman's uh, letter, 3 bar 25, he talks of a meeting that was way back in the 7th of the 1st, 15. That's X number of months ago. Why hasn't this been brought before the Fred Committee meeting before? Um, if I can speak to that, it's been, it would have come to the Fred Committee meeting, um, but we didn't receive um, Daniel Sutherland's application for renewal of his licence in time to bring it to that Reserves Committee meeting, unfortunately. So you would have deemed it as an operational thing up till then, I suppose? Yeah, he only had the op he only operated over the summer months, um, so his licence expired, and then we've only just received an application. Does that answer your question? Sorry. Now, could I have further clarification? If there appeared to be some difficulties in this licence being um, renewed, why weren't we advised way back when the problem started to arrive, so we could have then start to make a decision within our own minds? <coughs> if I can probably help you out there, Ella. Um, until you get an application for a renewal, you've got no decision to make. And so until he made the application, which was past the deadline for that last Fred meeting of the year, there was there was no consideration for you to, to undertake in your governance role. So the first opportunity is now, because that's he's given that, that application, um, in making that decision. If you need some more information, then, then Ella's here to better answer those questions. So what I suggest to you, Mr Chair, that um if this gentleman was not fulfilling the conditions of his licence back then, even though he wasn't reapplying, should that not have been brought to our attention? Uh, certainly not standard procedure. Um, so your role as governance is to approve the licences um, and as staff we monitor and enforce those licences. Um, and in this case, um, because of that history of non-compliance, you've got the officer recommendation there. It's now up to you as governance to decide what you do with that. Mr Chairman, can I then very quickly follow that up with the resolution that's before us where it actually says it's this council's preferred option not to renew and that's also a wording used in the licence for Splash CAF which is in the confidential part. Why are we writing the word preferred when who's preferring it? If you look at the, resolu if you look at the resolution, it it mentions the word preferred option on page. If you look at the top of three bar three bar one, jet ski hire, decline the application preferred option. I believe that's this council's or the free committee's responsibility to work out what is their preferred course of action, not something to be attached to. Yes, and and three bar three is just the text of the item. If you go to three bar uh, three or three and three bar one, which is where the resolutions one. are. Walk yeah, through right. um, three bar one uh, resolution yes. three. Yep. That's the proposed resolution from officers for you to consider, which says the council declines the application. There's no preferred, and the, but we've also provide a or resolution that if you disagree with the officer recommendation, you may choose to approve it. I stand by original point, Mr. Chairman. It actually states when we go through and read the agenda items, something is preferred. Whether that becomes the indicative resolution that we're going to pass. How did, how did they know already that we're going to decline the application? And again, it's the, the, item, the, the purpose of an item is for council officers to give our recommendation. Our recommendation is our preferred option is that the application be declined, hence that assessment on 3 bar 3. Your job as governance is to decide on through the resolutions which of those two that you wish to do. Thank you, Mr Chairman. My uh, concerns have been recorded. Me? I notice um, there's been quite a bit of email communication and communication since obviously um, he requested the meeting but you've had a lot of dialogue since by email anyway with the applicant. Yep. Councillor Harvey. Can I have something clarified please on page 3 uh, 2 where it says under discussion it says should council decline the licence application Mr Sutherland will still be able to operate his commercial activity on the lake but will not have the benefit of the licence to trade on reserved land. So does that mean he can still buzz around? So the, the decision required from Council is whether we grant a licence for reserved land. We don't have any authority over the activity on the lake. Um, so if you decline to grant the licence on reserved land, um, as long as Mr Sutherland has his required 
um, certificates and licenses and land on approval to operate on the lake, then he can continue to operate on the lake. Where does he come and go from? To Mobay. So even if we decline his application, what does that mean? It's nothing. No, well, I just can't do the other trip. Yeah. But the Harbour Master, who's indicating that he's not complying uh, with the, the radio? Yeah. What he wouldn't be able to do is he wouldn't be able to use our reserve as part of his activity. So he wouldn't be able to set up his camp on our on our reserve with the signage and his other, you know, sell the trips from there. Um, he can still launch um, his jet skis into the water like any other member of the public if he pays his boat ramps. Um, and as long as he complies with the Harbour Master regulation. Okay, well, if we, if we deal with the first mm. resolution first, probably be a good thing. Um, the walk on water bulls. Has anyone got any queries? I'd, I'd questions? Like to move that to. You'd be, you're happy to move part one? Okay. okay. It's a, sounds a fun, great yeah. Yeah. An idea. Yeah. I'll second that. Yeah, so that's been moved by, by Councillor Hickling, seconded by Councillor Body. Any other questions? Well, queries in. This is the first one, this is the walk on water balls. Councillor Harvey's prepared to take the first walk on water, no doubt. Because <laughs> he normally walks on water anyway. Uh, one and, it's a one and two, Councillor Hickling. Uh, I'll just say. Oh, yes, yeah. okay. That all right? Yes, so it's been moved by Councillor Hickling, second by Councillor Body. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. It's against? Aye. Carry. Hey Tim, oh, okay, uh, so the jet ski hire, Mr Daniel Sullivan, Sullivan. Um, you've got the officer's recommendation there, is any other questions or queries on Ella on this one? Mr Chairman, there is, I'd like to know, uh, breaches in regard to signage, I went to the council's website and looked up signage and just to sort of ring the office, going through this document, some of them had on private land. Can you just refresh us, what's the ability for a private operator to advertise a business on private land versus uh, council car space? Where exactly did he go wrong? And I know there's a lot of dialogue over those months. Um, so the licence allowed him to have a small sandwich board sign and he was parking a big billboard sign around the place where he didn't have land owner approval to do that. Um, when he parked it on private land, it was still unfortunately in breach of um, the district plan rules which have certain size, size mm. limits that land. you can have, so that was the rule that he was in breach of. And through you Mr Chairman, did he, after your approaches to him, change the operation of those signs? Did he, did he comply? He shift, just keep shifting them. <laughs> we gave him the benefit no. of the doubt and he kept shifting, but... Um, Scott, have you got an update on the, the sequence of events here, or...? Yeah, but they're covering So, I guess the issue here is is by allowing the activity to occur on the reserve. So we've got an operator now for two years has pretty much ignored our rules all the way through. We've had plenty of dialogue with him, we've tried to work with him in terms of his signage. He's blatantly just ignored us to the point where we've had to pretty much either prosecute or, or infringe him for those signs. It was only at the very end of that process where we basically said, look, you're threatening your um, lease on the reserve land in the following year that he actually started pulling his head in. And it was there were two issues. There was one, the fact that his signs were everywhere, but there was also all the other operators in town over that busy summer period who fully complied with the rules and were really upset that somebody was pretty much just doing as they pleased. Um, and, and like I said, it's a, it was a bit of a character assessment in the fact that it wasn't until we threatened to take away his licence that he actually pulled his head at the end of it. And he knew the rules all the way through. We had multiple discussions with multiple officers um, that didn't actually result in any action until the very end of it. So Mr Chairman, uh, the other operators that complained, did they complain in writing or verbally to the office? Uh, I think they phoned through service yeah. requests. Yeah. So, so secondly, do you believe that if the licence was granted again, he would or would not comply? Given his history, I'd say that we would, we would have difficulty again. You would or may? Well, we can't predict what somebody's going to do. So. We've indicated him to what the rules are. He has indicated that he is willing to comply, but his history shows that he doesn't. Um, just through the chair, though, to clarify the letter that was received from um, Mr. Daniel Sutherland, attachment six, which is actually dated the 8th of October, so that was quite some time ago. <coughs> Um, he says since his final warning, he has not had any compliance issues. Would that be correct? That's because he hasn't been operating. <laughs> At all? <laughs> no. 
on the reserves uh, in January. Yes. I thought the licence was for longer than that, Mr. March. <coughs> Basically, he pulled a signs and went pretty much. That was towards the southern pretty much the operation. So he didn't operate from the end of January. Because that was when you issued the final warning. We didn't have any issues after that. Okay, so he was, he did have a, just to clarify then, he did have a period of operation after that where he was compliant. Because you issued the final warning on the 25th of January after a meeting with him on the 16th. He operated last year off the top of my head until mid-February. Yeah, but he was compliant once... What he's saying in his letter is once he was clear, regardless of whatever, he was then since then compliant. Well, I'd also come back and say that it was quite clear to what the rules were for the last two years prior to that. But I mean, we're talking about, just to raise Mr Councillor Body's point earlier about the Fred Committee, this, this application must have been received before the 8th of October. So that was nearly two months ago. Just as a point I'd like to make. Councillor Park. I'd just like to add for um, those councillors who weren't here in the last training that when we originally granted uh, this gentleman his first licence, there were some safety concerns regarding the jet skis on trailers and reversing and whatnot and, and traffic movements in the Two Mile Bay area. And there were some issues around that as well. I think the hub master ended up moving him in the end. Um, <coughs> So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually in support of the um, recommended resolution to decline his application this time around. There's been two summers of, um, of some issues. Um, I don't want to stifle small business and operators getting out and being proactive, but I just feel that um, as, a, as a parent and, as on, and, and, as a, and also as council, just with ongoing issues <coughs> around safety and... <coughs> and I think flouting the signage compliance um, that, yeah, it should be declined this time around. Um, just a point of note though, thank you through the Chair, um, that his safety operating procedures have already been approved by the Harbour Masters as were the safety operating procedures for the balls just recently, so mm -hmm. they have been approved. <coughs> uh, yeah, just through the Chair, like last time, like two summers ago and he still didn't stick to them. Okay, further, further, further. Yeah. So, body, if the licence is granted again, we have the ability, remember there's a Fred, a Fred meeting I think in February, to pull that licence, would that be correct? Finished. To pull the licence, did you say? Uh, for instance, if we grant the, renew his licence and he doesn't comply with the requirements of that licence, we can pull it at any time. That's correct, you could. Can we renew it for just for one one season, or is he requesting a longer, uh, it's a term of three months? One, um, Council only have the ability to grant a short, up to six month um, term licence for summer recreational activities along the lakefront. So he would have to apply again next year as well? Okay. okay. Alright. Um, we renew it on the basis that the next infringement it's immediately cancelled? Okay, so I've got a bit over here. I just just canvas the idea. <coughs> I've perhaps given one last shot. Um, like if he has one more warning, then it's immediately cancelled. Yep. Well, I'll, t I'll test the meeting, Mr. Chairman. I would move number four that we agree to grant a licence for the period of three months. So, is it, have I got a second for Anna? Yeah, I'll second. <coughs> okay, seeing by Councillor Hickling. Yeah. All right. Anyone else want to speak? Anyone else want to speak in favour of that? To decline. To decline. To, that's uh, number three. Number three. Number yeah. three. Has anyone want to speak? Else want to speak in support of that? Well, if it be on procedure, Mr. Chairman, I can't yeah. move forward because it's a complete option. Yeah, not yet. But you can talk against it. Does anyone? I agree with Anna of Council Park on that one. I just think he's had enough time and I just don't think we should keep going back and throwing the olive mm. branch out. I support the okay. resolution. Anyone else want to speak in favour? I support the resolution. Okay. Anyone want to speak against against the resolution? My views are known, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Anyone else? Okay, so we've got a, a, a mover and a seconder here. So 
Does want to have a last say? No. Okay. Put the put the resolution number three. Um, all those all that have been moved by Councillor Park, seconded by Councillor Hickling. Yes. Yep. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those against? No. Yeah. So it's uh, motion is carried. Thank you. Could you record our votes, please? Record, vote, please. Against. Councillor Body and Councillor Jollins. <coughs> One nil. <laughs> 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 okay, item number four. Well, thank you, Your Worship. Um, the the uh, Chief Executive's report is, as, as usual, fairly detailed and uh, quite extensive. Uh, rather than uh, walk through every item at this point in time, I just want to highlight a couple of issues that I think are, are important just to mention. Uh, the first one is the reference on 4 bar 1 to uh, the um, Underlaney Park floodlighting scheme, where we're going to have a meeting with um, Sky TV. I just want to report back that that meeting with Sky TV has happened, and Sky TV have recommended that we shouldn't spend a dollar on the lighting, because they can broadcast perfectly capably with the lighting that we have. So. Uh, there's a potential significant saving uh, in, in the annual uh, budget for that, but of course you will see that project track along this year as not being completed, but you'll know that it's a very good reason for it to not be completed. So uh, I'm pleased that we actually sort of held fire on that project and made sure that we did actually do um, a lot of background work or else we could have uh, spent a lot of money for, for very little benefit in the end. Um, the um, bow wave projects uh, stood out for me in the financial uh, table that's on 4 bar 2. Uh, I just wanted to confirm that that bow wave underspend is primarily in relation to wastewater infrastructure uh, where we are still working with the regional council to negotiate resource consent conditions that uh, we believe are fair in our community uh, and we will continue to pursue that on, uh, on your behalf because uh, again we don't want to waste money on uh, things that we see particularly in a consent and environment that are either unreasonably onerous or not particularly achievable. So uh, you will continue to see those projects be delayed until we can uh, bring you a, a resource consent that we believe is, is uh, adequate and appropriate for this, this community. Uh, and finally, I just wanted to alert you to the fact that on page 4 bar 3, uh, and we've heard it mentioned already this morning that uh, Bill English is certainly driving the process of um, refreshing the RMA legislation together with a number of other bits and pieces of legislation. There is a huge risk in there for this council, as, as most councils, in terms of that legislative process, because as we've found out over the last few years, that tends to happen very quickly. Uh, it tends to have significant change embedded uh, that we have to find out at, about at short notice. So as staff, we'll be keeping a very close eye on that and informing you of any developments. But I also recommend as elected members, if you get the opportunities to a attend briefings or meetings about this particular topic, that, uh, that you do, because all information from whatever source will be very welcome uh, in this chamber as we progress forward. Um, other than that, uh, I'll take the rest of the report as read, um, and we've obviously got the staff in the room for questions as well. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr Williams. Any questions or queries of Mr Williams? Councillor Harvey. Um, on page 4 bar 3, where it mentions vacant land sales, 2015, those figures are not right? Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, unless, I'm not sure where you got them from, but Taupo, Kinlock and so on adding up to 73. Am I doing my numbers right? They're pretty much double that. All right, you might switch through the today. But you might find that um, these aren't up to cap. Are you doing from now? They've probably got those recent stats, I'm sorry, maybe. Well, for the year, today. Yeah, yeah but they're probably a month behind. No, but it's not that much different. Where, where did we get the figures from you? from Evaluate, and, and you're right, they are that they are out of date. So, yeah. Yeah. And as you know, with the sales at the moment... Well out of date. So what would these, what month would that be up to? Um, I think it might be something like August. Um, bearing in mind that's just Topol and Kinlock, it won't include the rest <coughs> of the district. I've got 33 sales recorded for Topol district from the 30, 1st of April to 19th of now. When would that have started? From what, year, what month? Oh, I'm pretty sure it's a calendar year, so I think um, yeah. from January through to August, I think. Yeah, I did a bit of a recce yesterday, and it was about 130 sales, I thought. <coughs> yep. 
so that's a really good yep. thing. Well, well, so I'd say I'm it. thank you because uh, it's important that we do get the figures right. Yeah. But the, the, the purpose of the table and the information immediately prior to it was to let you, if you didn't already know, that Topol is actually going through a yeah. pretty good time at the moment. Yeah. Uh, we need to celebrate that, but we also need to ensure that we don't sort of get ourselves ahead of ourselves either. So, so uh, yeah. we're, we're monitoring it. Last year, whereas it shows it's less than last year, and it's yep. definitely not less than last year. Right. Okay. Yep. Uh, sorry, Councillor Park, next. Oh, yes, thank yep. you. Just on 4 bar 2, um, under emerging matters or risks, it talks about the work being done on the Council's risk statement. I just wondered um, what the time frame was for that paper to be presented to Council. Through you, Mr Chair, probably to the next Audit and Risk Committee meeting, and as initial starter, which I think is February, February, I think the next yes. meeting is. Councillor John, let's. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just through the Chair, Rob, just a point of clarification on 4 bar 3, just in regard to the Easter trading hours and the bill that's before Parliament, it says in your report here that they'll be asking for submissions by the 21st of January. So just to clarify, if we need to make a submission, do we have to make it by that date, or is that when submissions calls for submissions? I'm just conscious of Christmas and... Yeah, no, if I, if I comment, Nick, would you have an answer for that, possibly? Uh, yes, that's the close of submissions. We're working with um, LTNZ on formulating position on that, also talking to uh, Queenstown at the far north. You've got Pai here in Queenstown who have similar exemptions to ourselves. <coughs> uh, the position we're just working on is whether we push forward to maintain the current exemption or whether we fall in line with um, other parties like Rotorua who are pushing for a standard-based approach. Uh, so what we'll do once we've drafted up a, a position for you, we'll circulate that by email, unless we can get in contact with you in a, in a group setting, and just make sure that you're comfortable with where we're heading on that. Yeah, sure, because it would be good to make sure we're all, if, if there are any potential changes, that we're all at that table on that discussion. Otherwise we might be on the dinner menu, as they say. That's right. Uh, um, just one more through the chair while I'm on my train of thought. Um, just an update, if I can, from Mr Samuels, please. Have you had any updates on the pro proposed merger between the Wairake Technical Institute and the Bay Plenty Polytech? No, I haven't. I reckon follow up and Wairake. come back to... Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, Wairiki. 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 Yeah. Wairiki. Wairiki. Wairiki, sorry. Yeah. Too many coffees today. Let me find out. Not come yet. When do we expect, because that report was November, wasn't it? Um, so I know when the submission closed, though it was going to go straight to the minister, so it'll be really in the minister's time frame. So, yeah, let me think. Um, that was Councillor John. Sorry. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Buddy. On 4 bar 21, we're talking about the gardens of significance. Um, it stated that the South Domain Gardens are due to be assessed September, October. It said that last month. Have they been done? John. I think it's actually November. I don't know whether that, uh, that figure's wrong. It's coming up before Christmas. I think you did say September, October, but it's yeah. Before yeah, I'm sorry. I think there's a mistake on that. On that, it's actually a local gentleman that does the assessment, isn't um, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a group of them, but he's one. Yep. One of them. Yeah. 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 My next question. Oh, sorry. Are you right? My Carry next on. question may well be to Mr. Lewis on four bar twenty-four. There's comments of um, twenty-one minor spills. Uh, before the waterways last month that was 10 and then if we go down the next one down to surge out out um, the fault out calls it says 38 through to October and yet last month it said it was on track so they seem to be some quite large call outs over a short period <coughs> the 38 um, call outs are for all sort uh, all things not just bulls and that's for the four months to October um, the target um, is less than eight, and we're currently at 2.11. Okay. So we're well within our target. Okay. I think it was just the, the fact that last month, and I'll check it up because I've got last month's agenda here, that there was zero. I said that we're on track, so that may be the number that you say we're, we measure on. Yeah, I'd need to check last month and see, but I, I didn't think it was zero last month. No, 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 on track, that's what yep. I was getting at. Yes, yeah, yeah we are on track. <coughs> Councillor Christoski. Oh, thank you. 
um, just going back to your four bar one and four bar two as regards to the flood as a plan change. I understand there was a meeting in Turingi on the weekend. Is there any update that someone can give me on that? Um, who was there? Uh, John was there. Turingi Open Day yes. went really well. We held it at the Bridge Room Watch. Um, we had a, a number of councillors from our working group there, which was excellent. Really, um, really helped having elected members there, I must say, in terms of interaction with the community. We reckon we had somewhere in the region of about 30 odd people turn up. Um, a lot of those stayed for the duration, which was really good. Uh, everyone was pretty happy with the um, with the way things went. We had, oh, if I was guessing, I'd probably say about 80, 85 percent of the questions were actually more to do with Waikato Regional Council's operations. Uh, questions around gravel extraction, um, maintenance of stop banks, uh, questions around rating, project watershed, and so on. So we ended up doing quite a lot of shuffling around and working with the WRC staff who came along for the day as well. But um, by and large, it went very well. Um, very little negative feedback in terms of the process today from our perspective. It was a good opportunity to talk to a number of people about their specific properties and it's great having the iPads and being able to zoom in and, uh, and talk very specifically about their issues. So overall it went very well um, and we'll just carry on with the, um, the process. We're expecting things to probably drop off a little bit now in terms of engagement as we head towards Christmas. Um, but then again, we'll ramp up early in the new year when we start to talk to people about the actual rules that may well apply to the problem. Thank you. Lovely. I Thanks, just Nick. like that. It was really good. Um, John and John and myself, who were on the committee, were there. And the staff did a, a really, really good job of having all that information at their fingertips. And having um, the regional council guys there was he needed them because and staff foresaw what would happen and, and they did a really good job and it was a really good interaction. Cool, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Park. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, firstly, I'd just like to congratulate Ian Connan and the Civil Defence team and Lisa and the comms team for the wonderful they work they did towards the nat national shakeout event where um, Taupo District had over 5,000 participants and um, I thought it went really well and I enjoyed being here at Council for that. Um, also, secondly, just on 4 by 13, the last bullet point is about a limited notified hearing in December for Waikiki Golf's Golf Resort. I'm just wondering, for clarity, is that Waikiki Resort itself? Um, I don't believe we have a Waikiki Golf Resort. It just doesn't make sense. Um, through the chair, that's the international golf course. Waikiki Golf and Sanctuary. Yep. And there is a... Um, hearing uh, later this, this month or beginning of next month between uh, contact and themselves as far as um, some agreement on drilling but they are hopeful that they can come to an agreement and that uh, construction can commence. Yeah, uh, Just for clarity, um, that's quite confusing because um, it's Waikiki Golf and Sanctuary is the actual name of the property so perhaps if we could just amend that because I would imagine that Kathy Guy may <coughs> may look at that and wonder what's going on. Okay, cool. Thanks, um, Councillor Cousins. Thank you, Chair, back to the, uh, the meeting on Saturday that the Councillor um, Stuart was talking about. There was a couple of grumbly people, as uh, Nick knows, and thank you, Nick, for following up really swiftly. I think Gareth's got a letter from him, yeah, which I'm sure your team will sort out just in regards to time frames. Uh, just one thing I wanted to talk about or ask about was it's not actually in this, but we had it removed, was the Town sent upgrades to Turangi about the storyboards. A couple of community board members came to me yesterday and wanted to know where we are at with those. Has there been satisfaction? Because they've all been agreed to, but nothing's up yet. Will it be up before Christmas? Yeah, we've just, <coughs> we've just got the, um, um, what would you call them, the draft stuff from the graphic designers up the road here. So I think there's a couple of tweaks in there, but our intention is to have them up before Christmas. Cool. Okay, Councillor Krasowski. Yes, uh, just for my benefit on 4 bar 9, uh, democracy in planning, um, they've prepared a JM JMA with two power tower. Is that uh, a different sort of um, agreement that we're um, talking about than, than the joint uh, catchment one? Or 
Um, yes, it is. So, so this is what's already provided for in the river legislation, um, okay. and so that that work has commenced. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Uh, sure. Thank you. Just a couple more. Oh, a couple more, Councillor Buddy. Um, on um, four bar twenty-seven, democracy and planning, we talk about the official information requests. We used to get those in our Friday email. I'm wondering whether that could resume. Just further down the page on 427, it might just right, be... I just want to clarify with this. We do include Lagoimas with uh, Council's weekly updates. Yep. I get the resource ma management applications, but it's a while since I've seen the official information. Yeah. 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 yeah, it shouldn't have dropped off, but yeah, we'll, we'll double-check on that. Yeah. But even if, we, if that's the case, we should just put um, official information. Look at our request now. Yeah. 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 Could, I, could I look further down the page? Uh, there's seven items in regards to economic development where it states that the first quarter for 15-16 will be available in December, CEO to update. Last month it said it would be available this month. Is there some delay in getting that information out? Yes, it's just um, the market view or economic data. Um, there is a delay, so um, yeah, that's why we put it in. That it would be December, just for clarity. Yeah, thank you. Just, just, one, delay. just one final point, Mr. Chairman. Also on uh, four bar twenty-eight at the bottom, retail spending highlights of one hundred and twenty-eight million, which is good news. Um, did anyone read the full report? Okay. You seen the full report. What in fact the full report actually states that the total amount spent in our area was 128 million. However, there was an outflow of 39.42 million, which gave a net inflow into the area of 88 million. Now, the reason I raise it, it's good news, but is it a little bit misleading to say there was 128 um, million dollars? And what brings it more closer to home, and this is, I think, where we got the impact of our overseas visitors. If we go to the cardholder area, card holder area Taupo, the value spent was 67.01 million. That is a 1% increase on the quarter, same quarter last year. But when you go to the other documents and it talks about what the overseas spend was, that's where you see the 67 million spent spending locally, non-local spending in the area was 61. So that really just shows the impact of the trade we're now getting through foreigners to, um, to Taupo. All right. Councillor Harvey. Uh, page 416, uh, current issue. Properties um, being repeat noise nuisance. It says there's a number of $500 infringements being issued. Do they get followed up and do these people pay these fines? And sh can anything more be, do be done? Can their fines be increased? I mean, these people are obviously being... Continually the answer is yes, yes. Um, says the fines are issued. Yeah, yes, they are followed up, and um, uh, if necessary, we're taken to court. So, are they taken to court? I mean, why does it keep happening? I'm not the same. They won't be the same. The same person. So it's a, a it's a thing that okay. happens on a regular basis. Um, the. Five hundred dollar fine will be an instant infringement if that's not paid. Then it goes to um, to either the district court like or the Two properties that keep doing it. Uh, I hadn't covered. <laughs> All right. Certain address on Lake Terrace there, mate. That's good. Okay. A um, couple of <coughs> questions on the report. Certainly, Councillor. Have you finished? Four bar, 30, yep. four bar thirty-five is to do with the Lake Terrace pathway. Now, as a result of a complaint from the Access Committee. We met with the CEO, Mr. Bowden, Andrew, uh, on site. I just can't remember the exact date. Um, I'm wondering what the outcome, and I know, I think, Rob, somewhere I've read what have you done. But when I went back into webcam, because I wasn't at the July meeting, I see that the um, the document here, 435, says the contract was full at Fullerton Hogan, on Fulton Hogan, and yet, in fact, it was by our website agenda, etc. It was given to TR Construction. Are they one and the same? I think one is a subcontractor for the other. So that's the that's the problem or one of the issues is that we've that, had subcontractors yeah, working on really that project. I'm making. We gave a contract to a certain company, and the concrete work seems to be subcontracted out. And quite frankly, the piece mm -hmm. we looked at, Rob, was a B mess. That's right. What, what are we going to do about that? 
Son. Um, I understand that that's going to be repaired. TR con sorry, these I don't quite know where TR constructions come from because the, uh, they. It's Halliwell. It's Halliwell construction. Yeah, Halliwell. It's not TR construction. It's Halliwell's name on the yep. end, yeah. but we on that agenda document had because I wrote it down this morning. We had down um, the TR construction, so didn't they exist? I guess the, the thing for us is the responsible contractor is the one that we that we've approved the contract to. Um, that's the principal contractor, and that's who our, our legal relationship is. So that's from a quality control perspective. That's who we go back to to ensure that that quality and that the contract has been um, achieved. It's normal practice that on most jobs there will be subbies that the principal contractor gets, mainly because they don't have the the skills or expertise to do certain parts. So <coughs> we take a AC bars as an example. Um, there was a um, company who, who bought some views who got their, their contract, but they had roofers, electricians, all sorts of subbies which were contracted with Watson Hughes rather than directly with council. Normal practice. Yeah. Well, just to go on and complete the as to the actual question, which is what have we done about it, um, we actually met with, uh, actually you, you pointed out the mobility access group, uh, or members of that mobility access group, uh, Andrew committed to installing a, a few more drop crossings um, for, for access onto the path, um, which has been incorporated into the program. Uh, the contractor was, or should I say, the subcontractor uh, was also called to a meeting to discuss the uh, the workmanship issues, and they have been resolved ongoing from that point that the meeting was held. So we, as a council, did have a, a project manager on site to deal with those. We have, we have a project manager that is involved with the project. He's not on site 100% of the time, but he's certainly paying daily visits to the site. Yep. So the two sites we're now allowed down, allow, allowing down for access for mobility people. Does that have to go through the council for approval through our normal parking, and or is it just that it's no, it's, a, be done? it's it's part of the project, and it was in the ideal location that that mem that particular member rec recommended. So uh, that was just GDI. Yeah, thank yep. you. Great. Okay. That's it. All right. So just a uh, resolution there on four bar four. Uh, information uh, be received. I have a move. Thank you, Councillor Truman. Seconded by Councillor Krasowski. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against? Carried. Item number five. Opal District Traffic Controls Update, Review, Amend. Yeah, good afternoon, Claire. Afternoon, everybody. Um, this item as well should really be going through the FRED committee, um, but we need to look at installing some um, markings prior to February when the next scheduled meeting for FRED committee is um, scheduled. Um, so what we've got is um, about six metres of no stopping on Lowell Place, which is to basically provide access for the contractors um, for the pump station on Lowell Place. Um, and the second one is to put in a new mobility space on Tongariro Street as part of the Tamamutu Tongariro upgrade project. Okay. Thank you. So they need to be done pretty quickly then, obviously. We'd like, well, we'd like the mobility space to be done as part of the um, Tamamutu upgrade project right. um, and the lower price prior to summer. So the mobility space takes up the place of an existing car park, or yeah. Yes. So is it on the Tongariro Street, not Tamamudi Street. It's on the corner of Tongariro Street, up just outside the Lake Surgery. Right. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. On the map. Okay. Zane, Councillor Cousins. Through the chair, and I agree with the. I probably would um, actually put the. I agree with the recommended resolution. Once again, I go back to councillor bodies' concerns about uh, no timings are an issue. But the free committee agenda items are getting thinned out with council, pushed over to council. <coughs> I do have a concern about that. Too much is coming back to full council. When we, and I know this one is probably all about timings, and as the others have been, but I'd ask that we have a more concerted effort to bring it to the right committee. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Councillor Cousins. Any other comments? Uh, Councillor Krasowski. Um, I'm more than happy to move, move that um, item as well. But just before I do, uh, can you please tell me what the overall number of car parks, or the losses of overall number of car parks, will be with the sale of the two Tower car park plus the, uh, the street up, upgrade on Tamamutu Street 
and now the, the car park outside the doctor's surgery? Uh, for Tamamutu Street, I think there was four that we um, removed, um, and we will be looking at putting in a, another parking space outside the new development on Rupehu Street. Um, the old, the old. Is there anyone? Um, so what you're asking for? Yeah, yeah, rather than try and try and create some numbers here, I think we'll report back to you by email uh, as to what those numbers are, because there's been an awful lot of inbound parking created at the same time as we've lost parks. So I think we should just do an exercise. Now I know the numbers are kicking around. It'd be somewhere. good to know because it's quite a yeah. topical subject. Yeah, 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 you'll be yeah. 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 So I think we'll, we'll just put a spreadsheet of information yeah. together and, yeah. and help yeah. you out so with that. We've got to really reckon it when we get asked. Yep. Just regarding Lowell Place, um, that's pretty tight for parking now. Yeah. I'm just thinking of the cafe and things like that. Is it necessary to have such a large area of yeah. yellow lines? I agree. You know, do we do we need to sort of make it so? <coughs> there is Lowell Place. Lowell Place Bugger all parking down there now. It's a very yeah, thin street yeah. and narrow. Job yeah, I think the issue is it's very narrow and um, sort of not really long and narrow, it's just quite narrow and the difficulty is uh, any access any other direction is impossible. It's really getting the um, the trucks in for the pump station, so if somebody's parked on the other side it just blocks up the yeah. whole road. And that actually is a major and quite critical pump station, so if something happens we need to get to it immediately. Yeah. But it's been there a long time. The pump station has, yes. The cafe's only recently been there. So further on from that, the cafe, the resource consent for the cafe actually states that they, um, they can't provide parking on the on the road, so they have to provide additional car parking. You'll notice that's why they've got the little sandwich board sign there, which says, have you parked on the road, please don't, please park in the hotel car park. So that's a specific requirement of the cafe. Mm. Is there not yellow lines here now? Oh just on one side, is it? Yeah. Yeah, just, just through the chair, I'd just like to add to Rosie's concern because um, the Waimahana apartments, I mean, they have parking for their tenant but no covered, parking. but yeah, the visitor parking is very limited as it is. So, yeah, I'd, I'd query the six metres as well. Does it have to be quite that much? Um, through the chair, six metres is not a car we're looking to park. It's usually a light truck that is probably in the order of four metres, um, and it is necessary to provide, protect that parking. If there is a failure in the pump station, you need to get a truck there with a small crane or something. Um, time is of the essence. That pump station, if it overflows, is going to go straight into the lake. Okay. Right then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he's I'm protective when I need to be. <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, sadly, it is a very difficult location, that one. And, and the you know the cafe does very well in the waterfront there. I'm, I'm told by a lot of people how mm. good that cafe is. Mm. But uh, the infrastructure really does have to come first in that location. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. It's been moved by Councillor Kostoski. I believe, mm -hmm. correct? Seconded by Councillor Jollins. <coughs> All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. Jimmy, just for you, could I just thank Claire for I required some information to do with car parking, and within a matter of minutes I had that information, so thanks for that, Claire. No well done, Claire. Yeah. Item number six uh, Swimming pool, uh, pool, Building Pools Amendment Act. Jane, good afternoon, Jane. Good afternoon. So, do we need to store fence pools? Oh, this is spa pools. I'll right. take the report as read. And any questions? Yep. It's, it's pretty much all pools. It's, uh, it's just yeah. amendments to the to the pools Fencing and Pools Act. We've had problems with it since the Fencing and Pools Act was created. Uh, this is a further amendment to that, uh, of which we have written a submission to to, to indicate our. Uh, particular uh, feelings either way, um, and we uh, require your, or we ask for, ask for your endorsement of that submission. Okay, thank you. Any questions of Jane? No, pretty straight. Straight forward. All right, suggested uh, resolution on um, 6 bar 1. Can I have a mover for that, please? Moved by Councillor Park, seconded by Councillor Stewart. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 It's against. Carried. Item number 7. Redundant policies. 
Afternoon, Hilary. Hello. Hello. Right. Everyone's got a copy of all the, the old policies. Um, yeah. I don't have much to add, really, but just to highlight, I guess, that um, this has sort of been driven from a couple of different directions. I guess at a national level, you know, there's the Rules Reduction Task Force in place, mm -hmm. and also from a regional level, there's the Mural um, Work Stream, which has kind of all been pushing us, I guess, in a di um, direction just to make sure that we've got a nice, um, tidy and consistent level of policy. So that's what's driven this item. Okay, thanks, Hilary. Any okay. questions of Hilary? All pretty straightforward. Councillor Chris Susky? I just have one, um, uh, basically, is that uh, under the Economic Development Action Plan, um, I understand what you're saying there, but then we have Rob's Economic Framework uh, thing, and we have uh, Will's <coughs> Department of um, Business Development and whatnot. How, how, how will we deal or cope or whatever do with that once we delete this um, action plan? Well, I guess that's sort of part of the reason we are deleting it because at the moment we have, or proposing to delete it, we have um, a couple of different pieces which drive economic development. Um, this one has has pretty much been completed and since then um, Enterprise Great Lake Taupo has put in their own strategy. So taking this one away just makes sure that we're, we've got consistent from that point of view and then also we've, you know, there's the work that's been doing internally as well. So, so um, forgive me, but does that mean we need to replace that with a new one and in order to take care of um, uh, Rob's uh, development um, framework um, thing? And Probably not would be my advice. So um, the way in which we manage Enterprise Great Lake Taupo is through a contract for service. So, um, you know, and as they come and report, you know, you can define what you usually like them to do. So that's how you know what they're up to. In terms of the report that Rob does, if you want if you want to adopt that, that's up to you. But um, you know, this this current report I think was written in 2009, so you know, it's six years out of date. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Any other questions, uh, Councillor Jollins? Um, just a point of clarification. Thanks, Hilary. In terms of the reasons for revoking some of these, we've got out of date and then no longer relevant. What's the difference? I guess um, for some of them, they, they have been in place for so long that they just simply are out of date and they're no longer relevant to what we're doing. But also some of them have had other policies which have come in um, that are not directly um, direct repl replacements. But for example, we had the arts and culture policy. Um, it's, which has got quite general policies in it, which now TD 2050 covers a lot of that. Um, so in, in that case, it's no longer relevant because these other things would it, which have um, superseded it. Hey, just one last question from me, the library policy. Yes. Um, do we consider it necessary to have a new one? Do we need one? That's probably something that we just need to do a little bit more work on, but we just thought we might as well take it off the list now because this one is so out of date that it, it's, yeah, so, but there, there probably does need to be a little bit more discussion about whether we need to replace that um, going forward. We're working, just, we're working in the region on that, so um, seeing what other libraries in the Bay of Plenty region are doing and we'll pick up on that. Okay, and um, there's no risks at all by removing these policies out of the system, it doesn't expose us anywhere? Well, we've been through a, a thorough uh, review process and, and made sure that um, where we need things in place, they have been, they are in place already. Covered. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Rosie. Um, Councillor Truman, did you? No? Yeah. So um, I was just wanting to talk about the steel extension policy. Um, so saying here that it's not going to be a public policy, it'll be an internal operating procedure. Yeah. So as councillors, how... If, it's a, if it becomes an internal operating procedure, can it potentially disappear? <laughs> if it's a policy, does it mean that it stays there and we are aware of it? If it goes internal, does it potentially get altered? Well, we've got a, um, the policy team manager's um, a, a register of all our policies, so whether they are um, a council policy which is available to the public or whether they're an internal operating procedure, they're on that list. So we manage that and... Um, Dennis is itching to go. He's itching. <laughs> <laughs> yes, through the chair. The policy really sets out how you determine what roads are going to be sealed rather than selling the roads themselves. You determine through the long-term planning process how much money you're going to spend on seal extension. The policy actually is the operating framework that says, well, once we determine how much money you've got, which roads have priority? 
So that's what Kirsty's trying to cover. Yeah. Yep. So the, that operating policy, would, that, that, that would still function, um, providing there was funding set aside for seal extension. Yeah, I guess what Dennis is, is saying is this isn't actually a policy, it's just it's a framework, a procedural way that we do it. Correct. So Kirsty will still be able to push for Marrow Road or whatever to be sealed. Yeah, exactly. I can still guarantee yeah. my rural Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That yeah. that's cool. the, the matrix still will still be, still be produced yeah. Yeah. and the rankings and will still be provided. Yeah. Okay. Can you yeah. just add, what, what was the last comment on that? It says, keep it. The amount available has changed, not the priority system. Um, should yeah, it be a policy? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, actually sure. So, someone had just added that on. I, th I, th yeah. I think the important comment is that the process still needs to be retained, yes. but it's not actually a true policy, it's more of an operational exercise, so um, <laughs> the important thing for, for elected members is that you do see the rankings between the roads and, and, and can um, justify where the amounts get spent. Yep. Barry? I'll move to the suggested resolution, you worship. Yep, before you do, I'd like number 20 to be added, and that's fluoride. I knew that was coming. Oh. Well, you've got 1080, which is a controversial subject. Let's get over it. Let the people choose what they want in their lake, in their water. Have it as a policy that we're going to remove. <coughs> um, well, I think we've already signalled that we're going to discuss that in the long-term plan. Isn't it? My point is we can do it now, Mr Chair. <laughs> <laughs> get off your... and get it done. <laughs> I think I'd probably be safer to go back to Councillor Hickling's room, <laughs> moving of the resolution and seconded by Councillor Park and um, <coughs> at this stage. But appreciate where you're coming from, uh, John. But I'm quite prepared to lead the charge. Yes, good boy. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Um, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? Okay, carried, and, and uh, Chancellor Body is prepared to hold a public meeting on fluoride. No, what? I didn't say that. <laughs> I said they can ring me and I'll refer them to you. <laughs> well, right, thanks, Sally. Good to see you. Uh, item number eight. Officer Delegations. Oh, Robert. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yes, this is a, a procedural matter, but it's also important for you to understand uh, where I'm heading on this particular issue. Uh, about two and a half years ago, I think, uh, I approached Council at the time to uh, provide delegations to the two members of staff um, that, that are named on this report, and at that time the Council weren't particularly comfortable with uh, with approving that, and I think that that was on the basis of uh, not really knowing um, uh, Brian and Will uh, particularly well, because at that point in time they hadn't really been exposed uh, to the Chamber. Um, uh, over that time, I think Brian and Will have done uh, their fair share of work within the Chamber and hopefully have um, developed a bit of confidence with elected members um, that, they, that they are capable senior managers within the organisation. From the philosophical perspective, I don't operate with a deputy uh, per se. I operate with a team of uh, senior managers that at any particular time, if the worst case were to occur, that they were all capable and trained uh, in undertaking all of the activities uh, of a chief executive. Obviously, uh, that's not going to happen uh, on a very frequent basis, but um, particularly for career progression and for job enhancement and job satisfaction, I've, uh, I, I would like to take the opportunity to enhance my management team by providing that uh, ability to, to give that experience and, uh, and, and uh, to, to, to all of my four uh, most senior managers within the organisation. So that's the philosophy behind the report. If I was to fall over tomorrow or, or walk away, uh, I believe that you will have a capable, well-trained team of four people to be able to then turn to, uh, rather than just limit um, limit where the experience lies. So, so just for an example, if, you, if you're going away, you will appoint one out of the... the, the there's only one senior manager that automatically, as of right, uh, has the delegation to act for me, and that is Alan in the CIA role. Um, if I was to appoint any of the other three managers to that role whilst I was away for a period of time, days or perhaps a week or two, uh, I would email all the uh, elected members to let, let you know um, what's happening and, and what the duration would be. Okay. All right. Any questions or queries of... <coughs> Mr. Williams, Councillor Cousins. Just through the chair, so I just so I get this right. So if you're not here and Alan's not here, you want to have a third one and a fourth one to pick up that role. Uh, no, no, I see it more operating in the fact that we run sort of quite a um, quite a nurturing and supportive management team. 
Uh, and so it's highly likely that all four senior managers would be here whilst I wasn't here, but uh, I would be able to uh, identify one or uh, one of the f one of the four to be able to take the reins for that particular time. But they would be very much supported by the rest of the team that was here. I don't anticipate a time where we would have three group managers away and myself all at the same time. That would be an unusual experience. So, is there time limits wrapped around those? Uh, in terms of time limits, uh, from a pragmatic perspective, I only have a certain number of weeks leave per year, uh, and so I wouldn't expect them to be acting for the whole duration of my time away. I would expect them to be acting for portions of that time away. Is there a high duties allowance payable to them for uh, the role? No, it's not actually a salary, <laughs> salary issue. It's, uh, Are they required to provide it's a more about job enhancement and career progression because, again, I wouldn't expect my management team to be here for a period of 20 years and to be able to give good staff, uh, very capable staff, the ability to move on in their careers. Uh, this sort of delegation gives them exposure to experience that can then enhance their opportunity for future progression. Chairman, can I ask the question? Um, an organisation like ours, as in size, total expenditure, etc., etc., what's the norm? Uh, in, uh, within our peer group, I would say we are one of the leanest management teams out. Uh, I have seen structures that have six or seven managers. Sorry, Rob, I mean the number that may, may take the place of the CEO if he's away. That would vary. That would depend on the chief executive. Um, I would say it's not it's not unusual uh, to run an organisation in this way. Um, some local authorities, I would probably, I don't know, I would have to guess let's say half local, half of the local authorities have a nominated deputy uh, but again philosophically I don't I don't like to operate with a nominated deputy I think that puts too many eggs in, in one basket when we have a very nurturing capable team Thank you Okay Councillor Jollins um, Just a couple of um, questions thank you for um, Rob What process will you go through to decide which officer you will delegate to? Is there, have you set a process that you'll go through to, to share this? I'll, I'll, I'll take each case on its merits, but again, one of the main considerations that I have are the issues that are on the board uh, at the time that I'm yeah. going to be away. Sure. Uh, and again, I, I would also look at who is around and who can provide support, uh, because the last last thing I want to do is leave you guys uh, unsupported as well. So um, we need to make sure that we've got the right team on the board and the right person making the calls if we're if we're in that situation. To clarify then the factors would be what was coming up on horizon that you knew of and what support was around for those, uh, for those uh, and the work and the workload that they have on at the particular time yeah and we, we always get notified when you've delegated that authority yep okay thank you yeah I'm moving it. thank you okay councillor uh, moved by councillor krasowski seconded by councillor stewart just, just a to the meeting yes um i would like to add that in the resolution that the ceo does in writing, put it to the council who is taking over in his absence. Yep, it, it already exists in resolution, but it exists for the last time. So this would have just add to that resolution. Would, would be my understanding. I'm, I'm look, the, the previous resolution requires me to notify you if it's not Alan that is going to take over. Uh, and the reason the resolution's written that way uh, is because I could fall over without any warning, and you need to have already had that delegation in place. Um, so you can add, re add that delegation if you wish, but it already exists um, in the previous delegation from two years ago. So I cannot delegate to Gareth, for example, without emailing you. Yep. Mr. Chairman, that's, uh, excuse me, that's why I find the resolution is quite interesting, because Rob, if you did fall over, you couldn't do what you're required to here, that's put it in writing. No, I mean, a new chief executive would come along later and possibly you have, have a restructure, so, um, yeah. Well, then again, knowing yourself, you might do we, do, we, do we give the undertaker delegated authority too? <laughs> but if I'm in my death, but I'll still have my mobile phone next to me, so who knows these days? <laughs> All right, uh, I think it was Councillor Council Bird, seconded by Councillor Stewart. Stewart, sorry. Uh, okay, and um, yeah, um, I think uh, you know it's a good uh, resolution this to recognise um, uh, these guys as um, up and coming and very respected staff members. So good luck to them. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against. Carried. Item number nine. <coughs>
Tina, Tina Arena, adoption of meeting schedule, 2016. <laughs> I meet in January, is it? I'm meeting in January. <coughs> First one scheduled for the 2nd of, uh, of February. Right. Uh, we've tried to follow a similar format to this, um, to this last year, however, um, you'll notice that the Fred and Audit and Risk um, meetings are now on a Monday um, rather than the, the Tuesday just in terms of trying to trying to fit um, the meetings in. Okay. Happy to answer any um, any questions. Mr. Mr. Chairman, we've thanks very much. Mrs. Jakes, we've finally <laughs> achieved that we meet on the fourth Tuesday of the month, which is brilliant. And I'm changing it, just to see whether you... <laughs> <laughs> because down here it still says the last, and then we're not taking into account the February, where it's the first Monday and fourth Monday, so maybe that could be added. Thank you. I see there's no meetings in October either. Uh, no, there's no. nothing, nothing um, that will all be um, we'll decided <laughs> after October. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyone wants to add any commentary to that or happy with that? Okay, with that being the case, moved by Councillor Jollin, seconded by Councillor Park. <coughs> All those in favour, please say aye. aye. It's against. Carried. Item number 10, Council of Engagements. Uh, <coughs> One further meeting to add on the 7th, um, Emergency Management um, meeting. I think that's one o'clock uh, start, one till two. On the what date, sorry? On the 7th, Monday the 7th. 7th, yep. yep. Um, you that's just part. through the chair, uh, part two of the recommended resolution was about retrospective approval given to a free workshop in Rotorua. Um, I actually didn't attend, my, I had my twins sitting an exam at in the intermediate that day, so I stayed and supported them instead. Attended. I attended on your behalf. So. Oh, yeah. sweet. Yeah. So I will amend that. Thank you. Yep. Nothing else we need? Okay. Thank you. Could I have a move, please? Uh, thank Councillor Cousins, seconded by Councillor Jollins. One and two. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. <laughs> Item number 11, members' reports. Finish those. Well, does anyone uh, have any verbal reports I want to mention? Just, just Mr Chairman, in regards of the last access meeting, we've had yeah. a few complaints in regards of those big um, gum trees down by Countdown, the access across the street, etc. Now, I know they're supposed to be protected trees, but it's becoming a bit of a standing joke. But also the trees, I noticed when I was down with Rob on the waterfront, the gums alongside our brand new path, it's an absolute mess. Now, apparently those gum trees were planted by the wind, in year one, um, <laughs> should they not be removed and something you're in the Taranaki you know, the town, those gum trees, particularly on that corner, yep. are causing a whole lot of problems. Uh, we've got a we're staff, we've got a list as long as uh, that, that are deterred any uh, in terms of trees that we would probably like to take out, so we're more than happy to bring a list to uh, the Fed Committee to, to discuss if, if that helps. Yep. Yep. But those are terrible on the corner. Mm, good luck. I'm just good luck with that one. You're saying access wheelchairs. Uh, yeah, well, you can't get across the street. I was going to say that. Um, yeah. 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 Only the ones that are not notable trees, though. Sorry? We'll only bring item mm. to do with non-notable trees. Non-notable trees. So somewhere we need to address that issue. Yeah. Through the so district. Can you not bring a notable yeah. tree? So it's, the it's a district plan change. Yeah. District yeah. plan change. Plan change or resource consent to remove. And you'll only get both, either of those if the trees are in danger. Yeah, it's just, yep. it's so resource consent. Yeah. Well, well, can I then ask if, if it's a notable tree and you get those high winds and all those sparks they call them what runners or something, smack into a car, or the trees tip over into the, the marketplace or whatever, who's liable? Um, again, we can remove the trees, we can trim the trees if they are causing a danger. Um, but in a normal course of events, and this has happened all around the country where this has happened, is that nobody's um, liable. It's, a, it's an act of God, and that's been tested through the courts repeatedly around the country. We're not. In fact, I'd say Taupo is probably one of the, the councils that has least issues with protected trees compared to most others. I was in New Plymouth before here, and you, you know New Plymouth very well. 
Um, here we just don't have a tree issue repeatedly. So the Fury Road trees aren't noticeable, notable, are they? They're noticeable, but they're not notable. There are some notable trees <laughs> on Fury Road. <laughs> there's, there's in the corner. Really? There are some are they the notable? The boat harbour there on the corner yeah. is notable, and there's a couple there that are notable. The ones in the corner of Redout Street and the main, main highway? Um, they are notable. I think they are. They are notable. So the processes have we deemed these trees to be dangerous? If you could possibly bring that to the Fred Committee. Sorry, no. If, if, no. if, they, if, if you're concerned about a particular tree, um, then let us know. We'll get our arborists to go and have a look at them. Um, if they are dangerous from a, from a science perspective, then there's a process. We still need to get resource consent, but there's a process we can go through to get a consent to remove. Um, those particular trees on the corner there, um, they aren't considered dangerous. They've been looked at quite regularly um, on an annual basis, and that's part of our um, risk management, if you like, is that we continually monitor these things. Because that does change. You know, what's safe now might be yeah. not safe. Can, the next can we report all of these through to the next Fred Committee meeting? Just even if it's a report to say what the status of these trees is, I think it would be a helpful starting point. Yeah. A couple of nails. Through the roots and just... Redo the road. You don't have to work the roots, though. Yeah. John can go down at midnight, a couple of hours. How about accidentally? Uh, Zane? Uh, through the chair, I just want to uh, say thank you to a couple of councillors, um, namely John Williamson, who isn't here today, and also to John Body for always coming to our meetings in Turangi and taking a very proactive part of our discussions, mm. knowing exactly what is going on down there. Um, it is really appreciated by our community, so I just wanted to thank John and John for that. Um, and just finally, that to announce my intention to run for the Auckland mayoralty because <laughs> every other idiot is, so I thought I'd throw my hat in the ring. Oh, well, we'll miss you here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <done one. laughs> All right, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I'd just like to make one comment. Councillor uh, Hickling. Yeah, I've managed, I uh, think, Zane, Zane, Councillor Hickling. Can I have your attention, please? <laughs> She distracts me and I get blamed. <laughs> <laughs> I've managed to get the item of the um, uh, Bully Point swimming on the next agenda on Monday at uh, Hamilton. Wow. Well done, Barry. Okay, so, um, well done. I don't know whether it make any difference. No. So, it's on the this is this Bully Point swimming situation. Yes, so, yes. so, Councillor Harvey could go down with your string bikini. <laughs> To dive yeah, off after all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> on the water wheel. Um, on the water. Yeah. Thank you, um, uh, Deputy Mayor. Just um, as somebody, Gareth, or one of the other senior managers, said that the concern was about we don't want to get to the body point thing. We don't want to make it to what we wish for. Is that what you, was it Gareth? Or what, you what we wish for, yeah, yeah. but we don't want to ruin yeah. it, but I'm sure it'll be handled in some Well, probably if this uh, metal. Um, area just a bit below if we could get some signage to say yeah. park okay. here yes. sort of thing or well, that's that's all i was thinking pedestal of the um tt get some traction the cycle way yes yeah it could be a could be an opportunity to fix it there too right. yeah all right well done thank you thank you councillors for all your work and your attendance on the meetings and various mm. means around the district it's much Thanks. against carried Okay, um, rest of the meeting is um, <coughs> in confidence, so can I have a mover please? Um, we go into confidence for the matters out right. right. Councillor Jollins, seconded by Councillor Hackling. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, and you wanted a two minute uh, break, just to time lag, yeah. Thank you, Matt.